work the photo it deserves. Today we are going to talk about uh, taking good photos of your work to go from this kind of photos to this. Hey, hey. To crush it on Instagram and Facebook and every platform on planet Earth. I think I have uh, quite a lot of advice to give it to you. Probably some things that you may not uh, have heard before because I don't know, I didn't. I just came upon this by practice and because I am a photographer. So we're going to talk about where to take the photo, when, how can you do it in the sunlight. Are there are some tips that can help you so that your work is really looking good on photos. Yeah, I can tell you it is, so I'm going to tell you everything about it. So let's start with the when. When should you take some photos of your work? The first thing is when you don't want to take photos of your work. I can picture the situation you painted in the evening and you are so happy with what you did and you just take a photo at uh, 10 p.m. with this uh, electric light to be able to share it uh, right away on the social media and the photo sucks. Please don't do this. Don't take photos of your work at night with the electric light. To take a good photo of your work, you need enough light and good lighting. And the electric light of your living room is not a good light. So my advice is as simple as this. Take your photo during the day and use this gorgeous daylight to make your watercolor and sketches look good. address this a bit more precisely the following on the video but I also recommend that you take your photo closer to the middle of the day so it's better to avoid the early morning and the late evening because of the lower light and also because light is not always white and it has a kind of a color so if you take your photo in the morning or the evening you have a higher risk to get some blue and the yellow photos but if you take the photo in daylight at the middle of the day that's the best moment to do so. Now, where? Where should you take uh, the photo of uh, your work? The best option is outside. So if uh, the weather is okay and you are able to take your photo outside, in your courtyard, backyard, balcony, terrace, that's the best. If it's trickier because it's a uh, colder season but you want to do it outside nevertheless because of this advice, maybe you can try to plan a bit ahead and get a bit of habit. For example, if you go to the mailbox or you have a coffee outside or you go picking uh, kids or grandkids at school, you like to make a walk or a run or anything, just take advantage of this situation situation where you already have your coat probably and so you can just uh, pick your sketchbook uh, at the same time and grab a few photos on your way. But we can't always take the photo outside so if we can't the best is taking the photo near a window to be sure to get enough light. And now I'm going to share with you my uh, secret strategy about which window to choose depending on the time of the day. Just come with me. So we're going to check the light in here, in my apartment. So right now we have uh, the light coming uh, this uh, side of uh, the apartment by this window. Maybe you can see my garden full of sunlight. So this is the light side of my apartment and at the same time the other side of uh, the apartment, which is my living room, is more in the shade. So sunny side of the apartment. The colors look warmer, so slightly more yellowish to the side where there is no sun from now. In the shade, which has a kind of a bluish light. I noticed uh, by experience that it's always better to take uh, the photo to the sunny side of uh, your house. This is even more important if uh, you take your photo more toward the morning or the evening, but I guess it's a good habit to take uh, anyway. And I would recommend that you would uh, do this uh, even when uh, the weather is overcast, because this will allow you to get more light for your photos as well, so better quality. The risk if you take your photo on the shady side of the house, especially at the beginning or the end of the day, 
day would uh, be to get some uh, bluish uh, photos that are not really so pretty to enhance the colors of uh, your watercolor. So because for me at this time of day I have uh, the sunlight just uh, here in my uh, terrace when I don't want to take the photo outside I am taking them here usually on the floor because I have the window really closed. If the sun goes in your house at the moment the best is to put your work in the shade just aside the sunny spot. That's how you will get the better result. You can also put it in the sun but this tend to create some really harsh cast shadows which are not always uh, the best. When you bring your work closer to the window don't put it just uh, on the wall because here you have a part of the window that is going to cast a shade so this would create you know a darker photo at the top and lighter at the bottom. That's already not so easy as we are going to see to get kind of a consistent lighting of the photo when we are inside but avoiding to put it really close to the window like that can be a bit of a help. So for me just putting it just slightly in the distance in here is quite okay. The window is still really close and I know that the sunlight is here so I know I will have enough light so this would be a really good situation for me to take a photo of my work. To put a photo of this piece outside. I can have it in the sunlight but this can create some uh, hard uh, shadows. Sometimes it tends to make the contrast even uh, stronger. So for me the best uh, situation is uh, usually in the shade, just uh, aside a sunny spot. You know the sun is just in here and I put my work just in the shade in here and with also a white wall reflecting the light in here. This could be a really good setting for me to take a photo. So when checked, when checked, let's address a bit of the... address a bit of the how. As a follow-up a bit of what we said earlier, it can be sometimes a good idea to be careful about the direction you put your piece or your sketchbook regarding to the window. Earlier I said that this would be the best option, but in fact because the window is in here, always have the risk that there is more light towards the window than the other side. So the logic would recommend that you try to minimize <laughs> the distance between the two and that putting your work this way, the light may be more consistent. For example, if I take my, uh, you know, landscape uh, sketchbook like that and the more risk you have, I think I can see it in here that this white on the page is really really blown out white but in here it's more of a light gray. I don't know if you can tell I am used to it as a photographer but I can tell you that there is a difference between the light whereas if I put it uh, over direction and taking the photo that way. Maybe this side will be slightly lighter than the other side but they are really closer you know so this would be a better orientation. Another thing I should point out is if the page is a bit bumpy you know sometimes with a sketchbook you can have this kind of thing. If uh, uh, the sketchbook is orientated that way you can have a shadow created in here and by the way you have also the shadow of the thread whereas if you keep it uh, you know the sketchbook a bit of the side part parallel to the window, you don't have this uh, problem of the page kind of casting a shadow of themselves. I hope you don't think that these details are a bit too technical and uh, bothering but I thought it would be interesting for you to understand it all and to get all my little advices to get the best photo possible. Another really important uh, thing to do is being careful about the angle of the camera or the phone. By the way this is my Porto sketchbook and because it's bigger this side than the other one the sketchbook is a bit slanted. I think that's maybe not the best so I should put something a bit underneath. I don't know if my shells maybe that's a bit too big to put underneath uh, oh no that's better to have the sketchbook uh, flat 
So that was not exactly what I was about to talk about, but uh, yeah, if you are at the beginning or the end of the sketchbook and it's make a kind of uh, difference of the height and we want the sketchbook look flat, putting something underneath the thinner part can be a good idea. And now let's talk about uh, the angle of oh, the camera or the phone for real. I guess I'm going to shoot this direction to show you. Uh, let's imagine that it's a vertical uh, photo. And in fact, you know, sometimes you just pay attention and you frame it a bit uh, that way. The framing is slanted and it's not uh, really pretty. A way you can tell that the framing is slanted is that uh, the edge of the sketchbook is not parallel to the edge of uh, the video, which means that this space is bigger than this one. And it's the same in here at the top where the line is not parallel to the other one and this space is smaller and this space is bigger. So this means that I am not holding my camera well. The problem with this is that it's not uh, pretty because of the perspective, the lines make you a bit uh, nodeous. And there is also the risk to get some problem with blur if your camera is not uh, parallel to your work. So to correct uh, the angle, for example, here the space is too small regarding to the other side. So to make it bigger, you have to pull the camera, this side of the camera, towards you. If you are not sure, just experiment with the angle and try to figure out and to check where the lines are parallel. See, so this is slanted and then when you turn that way, I think now you can tell that the side of the sketchbook is parallel to the side of the video. So what I am doing to be sure the angle is right, even if I don't want to take the photo of the whole page, let's uh, say for example that I want to take a photo of this uh, statue sketch, but not like that with the edge of the page, but just a closer view this way. I will start with my framing by, you know, framing the whole sketchbook to get my line because my line are the clue of me holding the camera really well. So if I see the lines are slanted, I will uh, correct the position so that all the lines are parallel to the camera and this should be the case of course for this one but also for this one if I tilt my camera you know uh, one of these direction that's not good either but once I have uh, you know the right direction of the camera I just have to move forward to remove a bit of the edge that I don't want or you could crop it afterwards but uh, the idea is always using the edge of the sketchbook or of your piece as a clue so that your camera has the right angle. An additional tip, it is not so much the case with this sketchbook, but sometimes if your watercolor paper is uh, kind of warping and you have a kind of a corner moving in the air and uh, the paper is not flat, it can be better to put some clips on your page so that the paper lays flat before taking the photo. Even if the clips are on the photo, it can even add a bit of uh, interest to it, so that's not so much of a problem. And this thing about getting the right angle while uh, you know trying to catch a bird eye view of your work is the reason why I put uh, usually my work uh, on the ground or on the floor because that way with your height you can be really at the top of your work and uh, getting the good angle rather than if you put it on the table maybe sometimes the difference of uh, height would be a bit too small and you have more risk to have this kind of angle problems. You can still climb on a chair if you have uh, this problem but putting your work on the floor make it not so much necessary to climb on a chair. About angle and orientation important thing you don't want to cast your own shadow on your work so be careful about it whether it's uh, in sunlight overcast outside inside uh, never put yourself between the window and your work or between the sun and your work because there is this risk of casting a shadow on it well if rather than standing in here and the window is the other side and we have this other window work artist if I uh, put myself the other side because I am not so much aware of it. This way I'm going to cast a shadow on my work. It's not really obvious right now but it's a wrong direction to do so and even if you don't have the impression that it shows it's uh, blocking a bit of the light and so try to avoid it and to 
Yeah, to let uh, the full light of the window bath the world. Of course, also the case, uh, for example, outside in the sun and where I am casting a shadow. I already saw some people sometimes just, uh, you know, blocking a bit of uh, the way and so that the photo is going to be darker in here or to have a kind of a weird uh, camera shadow shape. So try to avoid this the most uh, you can, not to put yourself uh, between the sun and your work, but rather the other side. In the case, despite all your effort, uh, the photo is not perfect, maybe not as bright, maybe slightly blue or yellow, it's okay. We are going to work a bit on the editing of the photo so that it's just uh, stand out even more. Don't tell anyone, but I am a bit of a creative photography expert, even more than uh, watercolor, which is quite funny. This content was not so creative, but I am really pumped about uh, starting to offer you some content also about uh, photography. Please tell me in the comments which kind of thing you would like to learn about uh, photography, which kind of thing you are struggling with, so that I can provide uh, really the content you want and you need about it. Please offer a cheerful like to this uh, video if you thought the content was uh, helpful. Subscribe to the channel to join the creative side of the force. Take care and create. See you soon!